All right guys, we're back with how to run a payloader. And if you're just getting new to the series, how to run heavy equipment and how not to run it. Like some of the common mistakes that people make. Question from my wife. She panics, doesn't know what to do. What's her safety move? Brakes. What she's to do, brakes, absolutely <laughs> brakes. And then brakes and then it. neutral. Mm -hmm. um, if something, if it really, really something crazy happens, main power. Shuts it, all Shuts it down. So the big red button is your emergency stop. So if you feel like anything is going wrong and you panic, just hit the big red button. I love big red buttons. Big red button. <laughs> they, they, I mean, seriously, that is. Those are nice to make things simple, simple and safe. And that's what we really want these guys to be when they're first getting into a loader. Simple and safe. And what's your exit strategy before you start operating? I want these guys to have an exit strategy if because if I don't want you to use it, I just want you to have it. Right, and you don't want to be, when, when you're in that situation, your heart's going to be pounding out of your chest, you don't want to be thinking, what do I do? You, you can't. You already know, right. There's guys that have panicked and hit the wrong thing. Accelerate. And uh, yeah, hit accelerate. I mean, I'll tell you straight up. When I was first learning to drive truck, I was 14 because I was on a farm, right? My dad put me in a truck and he's like, drive out to that field out there. I'm like, okay. <laughs> he wasn't riding with me. <laughs> and I went in the ditch and I panicked. And I stomped on that gas and I froze. And I'm, I'm going 60 miles an hour through a ditch. And it took me like 15 seconds before I snapped out right. of it. And I'm like, wait a minute, I got to hit the brake, not the accelerator. And I was lucky. I don't want these guys to panic because it, it happens. It happens to the best of us. Second scoop, right, Chris? Yeah. Does she have the machine? How does she have the machine set up right now? So right now I have the. She's using the bucket level. Okay. So she's using that so she can automatically level, so she doesn't have to sit there and manipulate the lever to get the bucket flat. So that's really helping her out a lot. Um, she's doing a lot of the things we talked about. For sure, she's doing the initial lift. She set the tires. Really. Brand new to it. Yeah. Sure. See, this is a. This is literally her first, probably ten minutes of driving a payload. And so, I guess one of the things that I want to let these guys know is that try to get somebody that takes it serious when they're training you in, because really. A lot of these guys inside the industry, they may take it lighthearted. They may be old, experienced guys, and they think you're going to pick a, uh, all this up intuitively. But there is a learning curve to it. Um, what are some of the resources out there for guys when they're they want to take this to the next level? They don't want to just watch a YouTube video, but they actually want to. Do you have any recommendations? Um, not specifically, but there are several. Like I know, there's a couple community colleges around. Most states have like a program to, to train operators. Over, you know, just very similar to getting like a CDL license for a truck. Yep. Um, we're starting to see similar programs pop up for, for operating uh, heavy equipment. So there's certainly multiple places around the country that they can they can take a class. So one of the things that I want to forewarn you about is. Um, Seat time is one of those important things. I want to make sure that when these guys, they, when they are investigating which school to go into, they're getting a lot of good seat time, a lot of time actually in the seat of that piece of equipment because that's really where your skills are learned. Yeah, I mean, you can only get someone so far by theoretically teaching them in a classroom and showing them pictures. That, that, that'll that maybe get familiarization of button locations, but you need the feeling in the seat. You need to know the location of the controls that are on it to get the, the, the feeling of the physics involved in, in operating the machine. I would rather have 30 minutes of paper time, getting familiar with it. Right and three hours of seat time yep. then three hours of paper time and 30 minutes of seat time any day yep. of the week absolutely it's it's important so also this is almost like the perfect training ground 
So when we look around here and we see everything that's going on, there isn't a lot of obstructions. We've got a wide open area. She's not trying to snake this in and out. She can get comfortable. So where you learn at is really important is how you learn. I mean, there she's going. And if there was traffic coming in and out and trucks moving around. It's tough when your confidence level when you're under the gun to really perform in, in a tight environment right yeah. off the jump. Um, you see this wide open area, when I'm training my operators in, I always start them out on a skid loader. I always start them out snow plowing whenever possible because I can put them in a big lot like this and it's not midnight out. They don't have anybody breathing over their neck. They don't have cars coming in and out. They don't have people looking at them judging their performance. And after I walk them through the steps, then I'll sit back and I'll let them just kind of go to town and then I'll give them feedback. That's really important. You don't want to learn in the wrong environment, guys. So she's not spinning her tires. She's no. got them set. She's uh, really utilizing the power. You're costing the company huge amounts of money. I mean, their biggest investment is going to be fuel and tires, and a set of tires on those machines. It's not. It's not cheap. I mean, how much is a set of tires on a piece of equipment like that? Depending on the size, it can it can go up anywhere from seven or eight thousand dollars up to thirty thousand dollars. I mean, depending on you know if you're a big mining style machine. So it, it's a tremendous investment for the customer. So protecting that investment, uh, having a customer see an operator being responsible, they, it's lowering their total cost of ownership so that's that's a that's an a plus in my book for, well, for, for choosing a candidate for sure okay so what would you recommend as you watching her operator to refine her skills what would be the next thing that she could do to actually take it to the next level I, I think a little bit a little bit more repetition um, certainly you can see a little bit how she's kind of pulsing the controls a little bit and this, this just takes time. Smooth like strokes on the levers to, to, to maneuver the hydraulics in a very smooth format to load the bucket um, will we'll increase her cycle time for sure. It, it'll take her a little bit of time, I would say, to get you know to get more confident with using more power. She's got a lot more power. She's probably using only the first maybe one third of the accelerator pedal right now, which is saving a ton of fuel. Yeah, uh, for sure. But but efficiency would be factor, down. She's filling. She's filling the bucket quite well. Oh, that is important. So the getting the optimum capacity in the first scoop of that bucket is huge. So if she went had to dig into that pile two or three times to fill that bucket up, that lost time, that right. wear on the machine, that's handling the material more than once. Yep. Those Fuel. are those are all factors that you gotta to um you gotta refine. Really if you've got to improve upon those factors. Any, are, are you having fun? All right, what do you think so far? It's not as bad as I thought. It's not as bad as you thought it would uh -huh. be? No, you've actually d done like amazing for getting the, you're not spinning the tires, your scoops are almost perfect. In fact, other than just improving efficiency and speed, it's almost perfect. So I'm gonna put Chris in there and we're gonna demonstrate how not to do a few different things. Oh. Cause you kind of didn't, I did good. Yeah, you did. Can't pick up you did. You did good. All right. Let, let me down before you. <laughs> I'm in park. I'm safety first. Oh, you're in park. Yeah. Oh, you saw me coming up and put her in park. Yes. See, that's my bad. We talked about making. I we made eye contact before it came up. That's how she knew. And I guess I didn't wait for the signal that the machine was in park. 
See, that's what happens when you're a farm kid and you're just used to growing up around equipment. And I don't do everything right. I don't. I want you guys too, though. So, my wife just had a really good question. You were asking about the delayed engine shutdown. Now, a lot of payloaders have it. Not all equipment has it, though. Skid loaders don't have it. So, basically, what we're talking about is, you know, with a diesel engine, most diesel engines have a turbocharger. Um, and the turbocharger spins at, like, 10 to 12,000 RPM, so it gets really, really hot. Um, and it's it's not a cheap component on the engine, so if we continuously shut the engine down without allowing that time to cool, mm -hmm. um, the turbocharger just sits there and cooks and cooks and cooks um, because it doesn't have any kind of air movement or oil movement, some of them are oil cooled, um, to cool it down. So these machines now, a lot of manufacturers are coming out with, and I know even even uh, truck manufacturers like Dodge and you know Ford, whatever, pickups have it as well. Um, that you can the, turn the key off and the machine will continue to run until the temperature is adequately low enough to to shut the machine down. Hopefully this helps you guys out. Let me know in the comments down below. I mean we're taking a lot of time. We're spending three days to shoot these videos, and so I need to know is it worth it to you guys? I mean not just how to operate, but how not to do these things because. I'm hoping it'll take a few of you guys and help you get started. If you're looking for more, we've got more how to run heavy equipment, the do's and don'ts coming at you down the pipeline. In this entire video series, we're gonna be talking about a 60 ton rock truck, which I convinced my wife to run. Um, that was a little tough to get her to do it, but she did it. A skid steer, uh, a compactor, and then also a steel wrist. And if this video has helped you out, you got to let me know in the comments down below because i am already started to plant seeds with Volvo about possibly making one on how to run a mini excavator, how to run a dump truck, how to run other pieces of heavy equipment, the do's and don'ts. So if you like this video, tell me if there's anything you want to see improved or changed, tell me that too because if I haven't made it yet, I can make the changes and make it even better for you guys. God bless.